you there, Thomas? Busier than a one-armed juggler with crabs, mate. You never said anything about husband. Where do I go? What's the best way out? Only where's window. We're on the first floor. Give us a bleeding lift. Sorry, dickhead, not today. Oh, yes. Very nice. Oh, I'd like to meet you, darling. You know that? It's a hell of a drift day to boot on the road. Ugh. Nice look, mate. You look as if you're soaked through the skin. I felt a bleeding puddle, didn't I? Look at me, Jekylls. Take them off. Hey? Eh? Just try them out of the heat, are they? No, sorry, that's the best offer I've had all day. Aye. A diary, a few photo albums, but no wee black book. Damn. 
She's got it hid somewhere. He always kept it on him, always. Did you check your bedroom, Ken? I mean, you did pop his clogs in your bed. You shut your filthy mouth, do you hear? Think about it, Ken. I mean, the bloke has a heart attack while he's on the job. The ambulance guys arrive. And he was already dead and a bloody good job and all. Literous son of a bitch. Yes. But if he always had the black book on him, then it must have been in his coat pocket. Right? No, oh, I am you right there, Master Mind. Of course I am. I mean, the ambulance guys wouldn't have dressed a dead bloke. Or worried about taking his clabber to the hospital, would they? Huh? So what did your old woman do with his clabber? So what does it make you leave the mighty metropolis then, Thomas? Health reasons, Angus. Oh, aye. Right. Is that really your name? Aye, right, aye. Right. I was named after my old man. Yeah. You hungry? My mum said I shouldn't take sweets from strangers. I'm famished. Me too. Please don't do this to me. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. You fancy something hot inside you, Thomas? Yeah, yeah, I'm a bit peckish as it happens. Uh, it was a very nice week, Alfie, just further up a road here. There's a very good fryer. Smashy, yeah. He's a wee look out spring for a grub. Hey. Geezer, we look. I'll spring for the grub. Do what? Come on, Geezer, look. That's all, man. Just a look. Cleaners, have you? No, but I know a man who has. No, it's not quite what it seems. I mean, you must be thinking nuts, all right? Well, I can explain. Honestly. You just hold your horses, you. No, it's all right, sweetheart. I'm not a lunatic or a, or a perv, No, honest. no, no, of course you're not. Normal people do this sort of thing every day of the week. No, but look, what happened? I was itching up from London, you see. Yeah, where else? I'm freezing my little cuds off and all. Yeah, well, you go and freeze them off somewhere else. Oi, lady. Lady! Go away! No, the thing is, I'm a mechanic. Oh, yeah? And I'm Lord Lucan. <laughs> no, seriously, I am. I am probably fix this thing. No, thank you very much. Well, are you sure? Well, it's going to be dark soon, isn't it? You'll be left here all on your Jack Jones. Um... Oh, well, suit yourself. Have a nice night. Stupid woman. Mechanic. And uh, don't you come too close. Don't flatter yourself, girl. Come, you got any tools? Yeah, in the boot. How much is this going to cost me? If I can get this heap to work, all I want offer you is a lift to Leeds, all right? Heap? If you hadn't noticed, this is a Jaguar, a classic car. Well, as far as I'm concerned, lady, any car that don't work is a heap. Now, you get in there, you don't talk too much, you do everything I tell you when I tell you, all right? Who the hell do you think you are? I'm the bloke who's going to fix your motor, that's who I am. Now, start the engine, I want to have a listen. Hey, 
You mutt nor what? Oh, it's you. Alright. Can we um can we talk? All that's to be said's been said. It's just a chat. Bonnie. We've done more talking in the month we've been apart than in eleven years of being wed. Now now, Ruby, don't get bitter. Your dad? Husband. Oh. Oh, sorry. Been up London? Down London. Yours is talkative. The deal was giving you a lift into Leeds, all right. Mm. Excuse me for breathing. Strubby cool. I don't know out about any little black book. And if this is some poor excuse to get me to come back, forget it, Ken Warren. Do you think I'd have you back after what you've done to me? Oh, no, lass, never in a million years. You bring that lecherous no-oper back to our house and he pegs out on my bed with you alongside him. If I were... If I were fool enough to have you back, I wouldn't be able to show me face in rugby club ever again. The rugby club. That's all you care about, isn't it? All you've ever cared about. Rugby and money. Well, I'll tell you something, Ken Warren. At least Stephen Hardcastle only died once in our bed. OK, dickhead. Well, this it, we're here. This leads. I realise it's not quite the metropolis that you're used to. No, I just thought it'd be much bigger, you know, I thought it'd be tower blocks and all that. Yeah, we will be very pleased to know that we do have gas and electricity up here. Ooh, and right stroppy birds, eh? Out! Ooh, so much for northern hospitality. Look, I've got to go to this place in Durnham Street. Listen, if you're not out of this car in ten seconds, I'm going to scream so loud. All right, all right. Thanks very much. And if you're up here on some kind of scam, I hope you lose your shirt. Last time I saw a mouth like yours, had a hook in it. Well? What's the crack, man? She returned all the clothes to his wife. She knows not about black folk. Look, why don't you just leave me to wait in a boat? I'd soon find out where she keeps it. Yes, you'd enjoy that sort of thing, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, Chicago. Evening. Uh, where to, boss? Uh, it's the Black Cow in Durnham Street. Black Cow? Durnham Street? That's the one. You know it? Well, happen to do, me old pal, but uh, it'll cost you a bob or two. Uh, it's in Leeds. Yeah, but it's his Leeds, isn't it? This Leeds? <laughs> nay, nay, like me. Leeds is 40 mile away. I think I'll have a drink.
Sal. You home, love? Oh, yeah. Come on down, Kev. Uh, must have been one hell of a party. Or wasn't I invited? It wasn't a party, Kevin, more's the pity. Oh, no. I mean, you've been burgled. Yep. It's about the size of it. Everything's been turned upside down. Underwear, the lot. Strange thing is, though, nothing seems to be missing. So you're just sort of touring about at the moment, are you? Uh, last night I do a show here. Tonight I do a show in the Leeds. Ah, and it's all juggling, is it? Yes, I juggle many things. <laughs> I am the best, then. Yeah, I bet you are, yeah. Listen, uh, when are you going to Leeds, then? Hmm? Oh, soon. There's no chance of a lift, is there? Yes, of course, my friend. And maybe you come to see the great Angelo perform, yes? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Ken Warren's a bloody crook, Sal. I know Stephen owned the junk shop and the two video shops. Not according to the legal paperwork, Kevin. When it comes to a court battle, that's all that counts. The legal paperwork. But he's cheating you, Sal. The shifty bastard's cheating you. He's trying to get back at Stephen through you because of what Stephen did. Well, you know. It's all right, Kevin. Stephen died in his bed alongside his wife. He's, he's bound to be bitter. I just can't understand for the life of me why Stephen did what he did, Sal. I just can't work it out. Ruby's an attractive woman. Yeah, but you're beautiful, Sal. It doesn't work like that, Kevin. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Stephen was just one of those men. My father and he's a father and he's a father. We're all jugglers, Thomas. Patricia. It looks to me like you could be the last in line, mate. Oh, no, Thomas. One day I have a son, he will continue with the tradition of my family. No, I think you're missing my point, mate. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, cantare. Right, you old bugger. Now what do I do, eh? I knew, you know. I knew all the time. <laughs> Ruby, of all people. And the aggro you've left behind. He's, he's trying to cheat me, Stephen. He's getting back at you through me. Well, I'll fight, but I just don't know where to start. Sally. Well, you've got a front ruby, I'll say that much. He were a grand man. Yes, he was. A right bugger, but a grand man. I'm sorry, Sally. For, for Stephen popping his clogs in your bed. Oh, don't put it like that. It's the way he'd have put it. <sighs> Aye. Aye, up and you're right. For what it's worth, Sally, he did love you. He was just one of those men. He couldn't help himself. You mean he just couldn't stop helping himself, Ruby? You know what I mean. He was a proper charmer. Charm the birds out of the trees. Yeah, and straight into his slumberland, I know. I've always known. Stephen and I had an understanding, Ruby. We met each other at a time when we both needed warmth. Despite all his ducking and diving and all the women on the side, he was one of the most honest men I've ever known. We understood each other. Cheers, Angela. Thanks for the lift, mate. Good luck, Thomas, my friend. Eh? Ciao. Yeah, ciao.
You know, that not-need husband of mine is playing it down and dirty on the business side of things. If you mean he's trying to cheat me, yes, I realise. I'll fight him. Good for you. Well, maybe this'll help. It belonged to Stephen. <laughs> Didn't know Stephen kept a diary. Well, it's not a diary as such. It's more a record of his slightly iffy dealings. Well, it'd be best if it was burned, then. Oh, no, no, Sal, don't do that, whatever you do. No, somewhere in there is the key to a small fortune. Small fortune? Well, the night before your Stephen died, he apparently discovered something that uh, was worth a small fortune. Found something? Well, like what? Well, I don't know, he wouldn't say. But whatever it was, he hid it away somewhere. He didn't want Ken to know out about it. Anyway, we were very excited. That much I do know. He never mentioned anything about it to me, Ruby. Well, he... He didn't have a chance, Lobby. He... Well, he spent the night with... I see. Ruby, does uh, Ken know anything about whatever it is? Aye, happen he does. He's very keen to get his hands on that little book. Well, if it's such a secret... How come Ken knows about it? Well, old Cecil at the junk shop were with Stephen when they discovered whatever it is, and, well, Cecil would sell his mother for a few pints, as well you know. I know I uh, promised Mr Millhaven the painting would be in my possession by today, but uh, there's been a minor hitch. It's, it's just a minor hitch, I assure you, gentlemen. How long, Mr Warren? How long? Um, oh, well, um, according to the uh, latest report from my field operators... Um, How long, Mr Warren? Ah! Well, um, four or five, five... Two, 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 two to three days. Mr Milhaven will not be pleased. You have three days, Mr. Warren. Now, just, just a minute here. I don't like your attitude on this at all. Mr. Warren, Mr. Milhaven is most obliged and most impressed that a little pissant like you managed to contact him direct with regards to this transaction. I'm surprised Mr. Milhaven resorts to violence. Mr. Milhaven doesn't resort to violence. He leaves that sort of thing to us. But it isn't necessary. Uh... You promised Mr. Milhaven a painting. He wants that painting, Mr. Warren. He wants it with a passion that a greaseball like you couldn't even begin to comprehend. And he'll get it. Oh, he'll get it all right, Mr. Warren. It's our job to see that he does. We're very good at our job. Excellent. You have three days, Mr. Warren. We'll be at the Queen's Hotel, should you need to contact us. You said the Hilton. All right. Yes, love. Oh, um, a uh, pint of bread, please. Yeah. Bit of a gaff to find this, isn't it? No more than most. You're from down south. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Aren't we all, lovey? Yeah, uh, no, I was, I was told he worked here, actually. Teddy Joyner. Oh, left here six months since. Oh, you're kidding. How much that? That'd be 90, love. Very reasonable, isn't it? Yeah. Cheers. I suppose you don't know if he's still in town, do you? Last I heard of Teddy, he was working behind Bar at Feathers in Arrogate. Arrogate? Where the bleeding hell's Arrogate? Studs? All right, we'll do it your way. Find that woman and get me that black book. Oh, God. I don't want to know the details. Just get me what I want. Is, uh, is Cecil about? Oh. Hello, Mrs. H. 
Uh, no, no. Cecil's in Arrogate today. Gone to see his daughter. Oh, God. Well, uh, do you know whereabouts in Arrogate his daughter lives by any chance? Don't really know, Mrs H. Were it important, like? Only he'll be back tomorrow. No, no, no. It's all right. Thanks, David. I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. Bye-bye. You might try it. Feathers? In Arrogate? Cecil does all his drinking in there, the nose. The feathers, you say? OK, thanks. <laughs> Evening, Mrs. What do you want? Well, no. I borrowed these from you yesterday. Just thought I'd return them. What, not your colour? I thought you'd be a mouthy bitch. Now you've got something I want. Don't blame me, dickhead. I didn't ask you to get involved. I don't believe I'm hearing this. You ran over me. Well, how the hell was I to know your foot was in the way? And you left me there with those two lunatics. They were going to kick the crap out of me. But I came back, didn't I? I didn't have to. This is unreal, this. You ain't got all the cups in the cupboard, have you? Blame an egg case, you. Well, that's a laugh coming from you. I wasn't the one doing a tap dance in the rain. No, no. Like, you're the one who goes around welshing on deals, isn't you? Leaving people in car parks, running them over, letting them get their heads kicked in. Came back, didn't I? Hey? And, and I, I don't Welsh on deals. Not many. You were supposed to have dropped me in Leeds. Not some tin pot back all the 40 miles in Indian country. Look, I'm sorry about that. Oh, well, that makes me feel a lot better, that does. And I'm sorry that you got involved. Well, I'm sorry I ever bleeding met you. So I've northern hospitality, eh? <laughs> Look, I said I was sorry. Yeah, all right. Uh, well. Thanks for coming back for us, I suppose. I should never have left London. I knew it was the wrong. I suppose you'll be going back then. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll drop you at the A1. Drop me at the A? Yeah, be listening. Uh, my foot is broken. Do you understand? This is broken, kaput. You ran over it, remember? Oh. Straight through those doors. Oh, dear. Well, thanks for not a lot, sweetheart. It's just been one of those days. Of course it has. And if you don't get a phone call, it's from me, all right? Oh, oh bummels. Do you realise I may never tap dance in the rain again? Yeah, well, at least I'll get a bed for the night, won't I? Turn up. <laughs> God, 
Dear old Lord. What are we going to do to get a bed in this gaff? I knew it was all wrong. You'd never have left the smoke, really, I suppose. Got to stick with what you know. It's... Oh, uh, excuse me, is there, is there an... Oh. God, make a bird like that and all. I oh, know how the captain of the Titanic felt, though. Oh. Over an hospital. Stick it right up. Are you getting in or not? You've got a distinct knack of making an invitation sound like an order. Look, Buster, I am cold, hungry and tired. My name's Thomas. Oh, as in tank engine. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, cosy, isn't it? Just so we both know the score, dickhead. No, no, Thomas. My name is Thomas, all right? Well, then, Thomas. I sleep in there, you're sleeping there. And don't make yourself too comfortable, because this is only for a night or two, just until you're better at getting around, understood? Perfectly. Good. I don't want you running away with the idea that I'm a soft touch. <laughs> Would dream of it. Oh, and another thing. Don't get any bright ideas during the night. There's a bolt on my door and I've got weapons under my pillow that will put the fear of Christ up Freddy. <coughs> understand what I'm saying? I said, do you understand? Not exactly the best guard dog in the world, but I suppose you'll have to do. Bet your gums are relieved when the rest of you goes to sleep. Morning. You taking orders for breakfast? You frighten the life out of me. What the hell do you think you're doing bunking around up here at this time in the morning? Was I bunking? You were making enough row to wake the dead. Yeah, well, I'm always at my best in the mornings. Well, if that's your best, I'd really hate to see you at your worst. Oh, she's a hard woman, Jim, lad. Melt like a Venus flytrap, so she has. A southerner? Aye. Never seen him before. Now, right, now, right, again! again. I had muscle. Didn't look up to much to me. If she hadn't have come back for him, me and Sod Bonds would have put him away. So, what's the score now? Depends on how much you want this wee black boot, Ken. You tell us. I want it, son. I don't care how you get it, just get it. We're clear enough for thee, lad. Here's a bell. 
<laughs> like them, lad, you only get paid on a result. Before me, you'll find the key under here, all right? How am I supposed to get back here from the hospital? Big thing with a wheel on each corner called a bus. Bus? Yes, we do have them here. Of course, you could always try walking or hitching. Excuse me, I've, I've got bleeding plaster on my leg, haven't I? Listen, I'm not your private chauffeur. I've got things to do, people to see, and I haven't got time to wet nurse you around the town. Cool. All art, you. What do you mean it ain't broken? No broken bones, just heavy bruising. No, 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 no. They said yesterday. I, I mean, they put that on, didn't they? Just plain safe. You should be pleased it's not broken. Yeah, I suppose I should, really, yeah. Here, yeah, look, um, there's no chance of just leaving it on for a couple of days, is there? Oh, come on. That'd be right daft. I'll lose that. I've lost me bed and breakfast and all. Uh, uh, yeah, see, what I want is, um... Help yourself, sir. No, 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 it's my foot. <laughs> no, I want some, uh, bandage, sort of plaster of Paris bandage stuff. Into women's underwear, are we, eh? What are you talking about? You heard. Guy ain't burglar, especially bloody kinky Look, one. for a start, I'm not a burglar, all right? Oh, and next you're going to tell me you live here? No, I do, in a manner of speaking. Yeah, yeah, you're right. a bloody liar. Yeah, you don't get yeah, me out of it. You. you a nutter or what? I'm going to batter you. Yeah, we'll battle this. How the hell were I supposed to know? Oh, listen, you dickhead. I tried to give you the full SP, didn't I? But would you listen? No. All you wanted to do was whack me with Jaws too. No, well, then no need to kick me in the head. I didn't kick you in the head, you wolf. Just shut up the pair of you. Ow! Oh, you big softy. But it hurts, Sal. He kicked me. I did not kick you, you gink. What I'd like to know is how come this has got a cut-down welly boot in it? Any ideas, Thomas? Well, yeah. No, you see, it's, um... It's not just any old cut-down welly boot. Oh, really? No, no, no. It's a, it's a, a special surgical cut-down welly boot. They're giving them out at all the hospitals now. Oh, I see. It just slips on and off, does it? That's, yeah, yeah. You just slip it on and off. Yeah, mind you, I think I'll have to get that one changed. He's broken it, isn't he? <laughs> You're not even a good conner. Do you think I've got a toffee apple for a brain? Well, what's up? Broken foot, my ass. You tell him, Sal. You keep out of this, will you? Look, he battered it with a bleeding fish. Look, look, it's black and blue. And that fish were my beer money for the rest of the month, mister. Sod your fish! What about my foot? Look at that! Look! <laughs> no, it's, it's no good. I can't even stand on it. He's just swinging the lead. I'll swing you in a minute, cocker. I'll swing the pair of you if you don't belt up. Right. I'm going out now to find out about a red Range Rover. And when I get back, I want to see this place gleaming. If I find so much as one fish scale, just one, I'll do for the both of you. Got it? Uh, excuse, excuse, Sal. We'll talk about your board and lodging later. 
Now, get cracking, the pair of you. The numbers in that black book mean nothing to me. Nor me, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, Sal. I know no more than I've already told you. Do you know anything about any other woman? There was no other woman. Well, what I mean is, I was the only other woman. A well-dressed, well-spoken woman who drove a red Range Rover? Sally, if Stephen had been involved with any other woman, I would have known. He was involved with you, Ruby. I didn't know. Well, I... I realised that. Look, do you know of any other woman around here? No! Sally, who's been telling you all this rubbish? Old Cecil at the shop. Oh, well, that old sod would say anything. Ruby, he had no reason to lie. He said he actually saw Stephen and this other woman, whoever she is, at it on the sofa at the back of the shop. Filthy gossip. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's funny, really. Should be me that sheds the tears. If you promise not to make a fuss, Sal, I'll have studs here, leave go. Look, I don't want to hurt you, lass. Promise? All right. I'm oh, sorry it's come to this, love. You bastard! All right, studs, leave it. Now then, all I want from you, love, is a certain little black book that used to belong to your late husband. Black book? Now, listen, love. Don't play Little Miss Innocent with me, or I'll get straight out of this car and let this animal here do what he wants. Come on, give. You coward. No wonder your Ruby needed to bed another man. Go up. I'll get you into trouble one of these days, lady. All right, we got what we came for. Come on, now, let's be having you. By the way, I think these are yours. What's all this, then? Aha. Uh -huh. Your table is ready, madame. Come on, you sit down. I have here a cheeky little number from the Bordeaux region, you know. This is a treat. Nah, it's just my way of saying thanks very much for letting us keep here last night. I well, know we didn't exactly get off on the right foot. <laughs> what, you mean I should have driven over the other foot? <clears throat> Wasn't meant to be a pun. Now, you just sit there and make yourself comfortable. You didn't have to do all this, Thomas. No, I know, I wanted to. 
It's only one of them frozen jobs I'm not too up when it comes to the culinary arts. Yeah, well, what about you? Aren't you eating? Oh, no, no, I'm all right, no. No, I had some grub with Kevin down your local. Not a bad little boozer, that, is it? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's OK. Right then, now. Uh, well, thanks very much. Um, you enjoy your meal and I'll just slope out and I'll let you get on back to normal, all right? D look, Thomas. But, oh, listen, I'm sorry I tried to con you with me foot. Well, basically, I didn't want to go, you know. <sighs> Do you like the flowers? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're lovely. Look, where are you going to stay? It's freezing out there. No, no, it's all right. Kevin said I could keep on his floor for a couple of nights. Oh, oh, well, that's OK, then. Yeah, no problem. Well, then. <laughs> yeah? Well, I suppose I'd better shoot. Oh, fine. Um. Oh. Yeah. Look, you don't have to leave, you know. I mean, I'm not just chucking you out on the street. No, I know that, Sal. But Kevin's all right, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Kev's great. I was just saying that uh, if he hadn't made the offer, then... Um... Well, it's very kind of you. I'll... I'll see you. I... Yeah. Yeah, bye, Thomas. Oh, come here, you. <sighs> Thank you very much. Thomas! Look, uh, I I'm sorry if I seemed hard and unfriendly. It's just that, well, I'm sorry, OK? Yeah, I know so. Ta -da. Bye. <sighs> Get the Kevin's gaff from it. Oh, are you all right? Oh, look. You're crying. What's up? Yeah, I'm crying. I don't want to be alone, Thomas. Not tonight. Oh, come on, come on. You wipe those tears. Come on. Wipe those tears away, lass. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with me. I just feel so frightened. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> oi, come look. You've had a rough time and you're out on your feet, all right? Well, all you need is a good night's kip to do you the world of good. <laughs> Come on, young lady, bedtime. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, I'll sleep here same as I did last night, all right? Mind you, we've got to be up early, us poachers. <laughs> Better lock your door. <laughs> oh, shit. There's no turning. 